Hello everyone, thanks for joining. I hope you are well in these days. I'm Ornop, I'm a software engineer at Epsco. With a bunch of other developers, I'm currently working on the QDB project. Today, I'm going to give you an overall update from the MongoDB side of our QDB project. What new features we aim at and what we have done so far. I'm also expecting suggestions and feedback from you, uh, from you for the betterment of our project. In this webinar, uh, I will uh, cover these topics. Firstly, I will introduce you to in-memory MongoDB replica set and shardic cluster. Then I will deploy in-memory MongoDB replica set and shardic cluster and check some uh, manual failover by deleting uh, the ports and we'll check the high availability also. And then I will uh, create a vertical scale ops request to scale up the in-memory MongoDB replica set vertically and then the horizontal scaling ops request to scale up the sharded MongoDB cluster horizontally. And lastly, but not leastly, I will introduce you to auto scaling with integrated VPA for in-memory storage. I will do all of these things with a live demonstration. So, so the point you try hands-on on your own, you can do it easily. So uh, let's first introduce to in-memory database. On the left-hand side, you can uh, see the uh, traditional structure of MongoDB replica set, where one primary and two secondary uh, is uh, cooperating each other. And uh, the uh, secondary ports are actually replicating the uplogs from the primary. Uplog in MongoDB is a special kind of kept collection, a fixed size collection that overrides its oldest entries so when it reaches its maximum size. You can uh, consider it as the rolling history of data modification commands. On the right hand side, you can see uh, in memory structure, and there you can uh, you can see that there are uh, actually no disks here. And uh, starting in MongoDB Enterprise version 3.2.6, the in memory storage engine is available. Other than some metadata and diagnostic related data, the in memory storage engine doesn't maintain any on-disk data. It stores all of its configuration data, indexes, user credentials, and actual uh, the collections directly onto the pod memory. By avoiding a disk storage, the in-memory storage engine allows for more predictable latency for database operations. But there is a huge downside that should be remembered when using in more databases. And that is uh, for uh, some reason, let's think uh, for some reason all the replicas restart together and uh, all of your data will be get lost because the data was kept in the pod memory and there that is so important that we should think about this issue seriously before uh, deploying a in memory database so uh, let's start the demonstration here uh, you can see some resources uh, these are the resources you can use for the follow-up uh, of this demonstration here you can uh, go to the uh, license issuer.expert.com for the kubedb license and uh, you can go to kubedb.com uh, for uh, the documentation of kubedb and uh, mongodb you can uh, also uh, check out our youtube channel where you can uh, find some important videos on uh, some stuffs related to kubernetes so uh, here is the installation commands uh, I have uh, already installed kubedb operator, so you can uh, check the following uh, link given in the previous page so that you can get the license. Here you should give the license here. And here is a good thing uh, I want to announce is that uh, we are going to cut release next Friday on August 5th. So here is the uh, in-memory replica set YML that I'm going to deploy. Its API version is kubedb.com beyond alpha 2, which kind is MongoDB. The name is MGRS in DB space. The version I'm using is Parkuna 4.4.10. There are three figures. And uh, these are the spec. You can see that uh, it's uh, 500M uh, CPU and uh, 500MB of memory for each of the ports. Here you can see uh, the config secret field. Uh, here you can give the secret uh, for in memory MongoDB uh, replica set. And this is the storage engine is in memory. You already see. And the storage type is epimatter. 
I have also used uh, the TLS. So I need to uh, give the issuer name, Mongoose issuer, and I need to uh, create the issuer and the secret for that. This is the secret, Mongoose, and I have uh, created the secret here in TV names, in demo instance. And the termination policy is set to report. So when deleting the MongoDB, all the resources will be cleared. So let's start the demonstration. Here, some files. So I'm going to first apply the secret. The secret has been created. Then I'm going to create the issuer. Issuer created. And now the replica set. Okay. Uh, on the right hand side, here you can see that this uh, will show the databases, ops request, and autoscaler uh, CROs here. And uh, this uh, window will be used for uh, some exact commands inside the database ports. Here you can see that the MongoDB tbdb.com is in provisioning state. So the ports are being created. You can get the ports here. Which is in demo space, these are creating. So let's wait for some time to uh, create all the ports. After uh, it has been created, it should be ready status. Let's see what is happening. Yes, third port is initializing. Okay. So all this time, it should be ready in a few seconds. Yes. Now uh, I can uh, exit into one of the database. And as, uh, as the TLS was enabled, so I need to add the TLS search file. Here you can see that the host is localhost. I have given the TLS CA file and TLS search file here and the password and username. So we are inside the primary. Let's search status. Okay. The port zero is primary and a port one is secondary and this one is secondary. So everything is correctly working. I can uh, also show you the port YML. Okay. So if I go to the resource section, there is the resource section and there are everything set correctly. So everything is working perfectly. So let's uh, insert some data into the database. So the DBs here, if I use something like my DB, okay, DB dot, I'm uh, going to insert some data, products dot, uh, one. just some random data, okay, data is inserted possible, so if uh, I now delete some of the ports, sorry, PS3 ports. Here, if I delete some of the ports, uh, the data should be there. Okay. So I going, I'm going to delete one of the port here. Suppose I'm going to delete this port. Okay. Here, the database status is critical, so it will uh, take some time to uh, restart this port. Here, here, remember that we are inside the MDRS 2. We have deleted the MDRS 1. One the secondary node has been deleted. So, yes, this is ready. So, no, if I delete MDRS 0 now, Okay, this has been deleted. And now if I go to one or two, doesn't matter. Okay, this 
this is the primary now. Let's see the status. Here, this is the secondary, this is the primary, we're inside it, and this is secondary. So database is ready state. Now, if I show the database, here you can see that my DB is there. And if I use my DB and show the collection and DB dot products dot one, here you can see that the data is persistent. So manual, manual failover is uh, done perfectly and you can see that this is highly available so we have uh, shown you that so there was uh, it was the mgrs0 it was mgrs1 it was mgrs2 it was replicating that data we have inserted the data in the primary and the secondary was uh, replicating from it and we have manually deleted the mgrs0 so it was for sometimes uh, out of the replica set and MGRS1 has become primary and when it is uh, being ready, so it will join as a secondary. So everything is fine. Now I'm going to uh, show you a Mongo MongoDB ops request called uh, type particle scaling. Here you can see that these are the configuration I'm going to apply. The kind is MongoDB ops request, which is uh, beyond alpha one API version still. And the database ref is MGRS. The same name was uh, used for the replica set. And uh, for the replica set, I am setting uh, the request to CPU of 600M and memory to 1 GB. So after uh, it, it gets successful, we should see the memory to be 1 GB and CPU to be 600M. And we are also uh, applying the configuration of um, in memory replica set here. You can see that the secret is being used to do that. You can also uh, use, use this structure where the inline config can be directly set the uh, MongoDB configuration. So you can follow either this or this request. And you should uh, create the secret before applying this structure. So let's apply now this particle here you can see that the mongodb ops request is progressing state it is it will restart all the three ports one by one and then rejoin to the replica set you can see the port situation one has been already restarted so it will uh, restart to secondary first and then the primary. We can watch this so that here this is already restarting. After restarting this secondary, this primary will be restarted too. Okay. Now this should be started, yes. The status you can see is still in progressing state. After it is successfully restarted, it should be successful. the same time i can exit into one of the four so it is successful now and if i now run the mongo command this is the primary and rs the status should show all the configuration members so this primary and these are the secondary so everything is good and also you can check the port YML. 
mgrs okay so yeah, everything is good so now i am going to uh, delete those the particle of sequence and also the database now i am going to show you uh, in memory sharded cluster so we have already shown the in memory mongodb for replica set sharding is a method for distributing data across multiple machines mongodb uses sharding to support deployments with very large data sets and high throughput operation here you can uh, see the three items which one is shard one is config server and one is mongos shard are uh, actually hold the actual data bearing rules each shard contains a, a subset of sharded data so each shard can be deployed as a replica set and here you can see that there is two shards and each each shard has three replicas so each of the shard is actually a replica set and uh, this is the mongoose and mongoose acts like a query router so the client actually will connect to the mongoose code and uh, this is the config server this uh, will store the metadata and configuration settings for the sharded cluster so now uh, to execute a certain query from the client application it will first connect to the mongoose node and the mongoose node will ask the config server to get the correct shard to work with so uh, so the client get the cluster level data not the subset of the data so we're going to apply this yml let's see what was in the yml uh, the name was mgsh which is in demo space the storage engine is in memory uh, i have uh, used config server of three replicas mongo with two and this is the shard spec here you can see the memory and cpu request has been set the storage type is set to f narrow not the durable type and uh, termination policy is set to without Let's see what is happening here. The ports should be started by now. Yes, these are initializing. So there will be total of uh, three plus two five and three to six. So eleven ports will be there. They are initializing. The config after uh, the config server and shard to be ready, then the mongoose will be there. And yeah, the HTS, which is stateful set, the mongoose stateful set has not been created yet, so this should be uh, ready first. Okay, now the mongoose has been created. Yes. There will be two replicas of Mongoose. Uh, let's wait for some time. Okay. So yeah, all the ports is running now. And this should be uh, successful in a few seconds. Okay, this is ready. Uh, I can exit into one of the port. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use this one. Okay. And if I uh, now want to show the client CMD ops, which is this command. Need to first log in. The password is MongoDB good password. 
and the command is admin command. Which is get seen in the timeouts. Here you can see that the storage engine, sharding, and all the stuffs. We have uh, already set the storage between memory in uh, the arguments. So there is nothing you can do. Uh, we have already done everything. Also, uh, you can uh, show the status. I'm going to do that. Now, uh, we are going to horizontally scale this uh, sharded cluster. Here, you can see that the time is MongoDB of request, which is in a beyond alpha state. The name is going to be horizontal in demo space. The type is set to horizontal scaling. The database rep is MGSH, which is uh, this this one mjsh and it has uh, the the stack I'm specifying it that it should be three shirts and four replicas and this request should be applied should be executed if the db is ready so after applying it let's apply first okay. The horizontal scale of request is in progressing. Uh, you can watch those. So yeah, the third replica is initializing. Previously there was two. Uh, previously there was three, and the port is running. We have uh, specified here the replicas count is four, and there should be three shard. Previously, there was two shard, which was shard zero and shard one, and now shard two is creating, is being created. So this shard also uh, needs four replica, so they will uh, be created one by one. You can also get the stateful sets here and here you can see that there are three shirts and four replicas so after creating in the replicas and shards uh, it will uh, restart the two mongoose so that the mongoose uh, get the updated uh, shard configuration Okay, this is initializing. Let's see the state to set here. Okay, all uh, all the replicas and shards have been created and running, so we can now restart the mongoose. This will uh, take some time. After the mongoose uh, in running state, the, it should be successful and uh, the DB should be in ready status. Okay, the mongoose one has been restarted and yes, this is successful. So the horizontal scaling uh, on the in memory sharded cluster is working. Here you can see. And uh, lastly, I am going to uh, show you auto scaling part. So, why uh, we need auto scaling? Because uh, if we don't use auto scaling, we have to install Prometheus and Grafana yourself. Then you have to uh, say your devs to always look at the production cluster resources, uh, so that if uh, there are any changes on the CPU or memory, you can. Uh, update it quickly and thirdly you have to calculate all the resources to uh, set it in the request and limits of the each of the ports 
and the fourthly uh, if it is a in memory database so you have to uh, run some db specific commands to get current in memory size and in memory usages and also uh, you have to uh, look or uh, look for all uh, all the shards and replica set by uh, looking for each one and uh, thirdly uh, fifthly you will get a no recommendation if you don't use auto scale so uh, if you uh, use mongodb autoscaler which is uh, in api version autoscaling.qdb.com in v1 alpha on state you uh, need a database which is uh, being referred here mgrs so let's create it first before moving on so you can uh, delete the previous things shard so we have uh, deleted the previous uh, shard related things they are all terminating okay now i can apply the replica again because uh, this mgrs uh, was actually referred here so we need the tv to be ready and uh, if i uh, tell about this spec here uh, firstly you can see the ops request options spec here where uh, you can see that there are three fields readiness criteria timeout and apply this ops request options actually uh, will uh, trigger the uh, ops request specs so this if if it is set to if ready or it can be value of always so if it's set to if ready the if the db is ready only if when the obstacles will be applied and if it is set to always uh, the obstacles will always be applied this is the timeout where each of the operation should not take two a minute if uh, some operation take more than two minutes that will be uh, called as a failed uh, status and here is the uh, readiness criteria so uh, we, we are setting the obstruct max seconds to 10 and the objects count the percentage to 10 uh, which which is saying that the uh, if uh, if there are two ports and uh, the object count uh, there are some object count different uh, dif difference so that should be uh, not uh, that should be less than 10 per 10% and here you can see that this is the compute spec here we are uh, going to uh, see uh, to watch this replica set the trigger is on so the recommendation will be created and the port lifetime uh, threshold is three minutes so if uh, the port has not been uh, restarted in uh, less than three minutes we should not uh, restart it then and this is the man min allowed so we have set the cpu to 600 m and maybe to 250 mb this is the max allowed and uh, this is the in memory storage you can see so usage threshold is uh, set to 70 percent so if uh, the uh, in memory storage usage is more than 70 percent we should uh, scale the in memory scaling factor by 50 percent so if uh, the uh, in memory storage is currently 100 mb so after scaling it 50 percent it should be uh, 150 mb so this is the auto scale spec now we are going to apply it okay the auto scaler is being applied here you can see that there is already a uh, obstacle progressing uh, let's see its spec it has been created by the auto scaler let's see why it has been created this is the name just copy here uh, you can see that the memory is being set to 659 MB. Uh, why so? Because we have already uh, have a secret called in memory config, which is 0.4 GB. So if I calculate 0.4 GB, 0.4, which is uh, 409 MB. 
this is the in memory storage and we have uh, specified the minimum memory should be 250 so this is the port memory 250 and uh, 409 is the in memory so 409 plus 250 and this is the total uh, memory request that has been applied as uh, it was uh, set in the min allowed so after the auto scaling applied this has been created automatically the port is being restarted after uh, restarting all the ports we should be successful and yes this is successful so if i now exit into one of the port let's see the port names these are the ports uh, let's see we are going to exit into this port and as uh, the PLS is enabled so we need the whole command for which you have already uh, seen the PM file the certificate file and the CFL has been set here uh, before uh, doing that I'm going to show you another thing I want to uh, insert some data into the replica set so just going to the temp folder and I'm just copy and pasting a script here. This is the uh, script, a script which will be run and insert some uh, random data into the database. So okay. This is uh, the script. You can uh, write your own script to inserting in the database or to check this. Now I'm going to uh, copy the Mongo command again. This is the command. And if I now uh, run this JS script file, we should insert the data. The data is being inserted. Okay. All the data has been inserted. Uh, if I uh, now check the current usage, this is the primary. If I uh, want to check the current usage, you should run the db server status command. Oh, this is a long thing. We need the in memory. Yes. And here there is a field called uh, maximum bytes uh, configured uh, let's see that maximum bytes configured and uh, this is the maximum byte configured now you can uh, simply it is in bytes so if we want to see in MB, you need to just do some calculation there. So 409 MB is set. And uh, if I want to see the current usage, which is uh, bytes current in memory, in the cache, this is the current usage. So I just do that calculation again open test so 156 mb has been used uh, in uh, 409 mb so this has not been uh, the 70 percent yet because after uh, crossing the 70 percent we should uh, trigger the vertical scale of request so let's insert more data now just exit from here we're going to insert more data so that we can show the trigger okay we have run the dummy script again the data has been inserted
so yeah we can uh, now exit into the port and see the if if it has crossed to the 70 percent here you can see that uh, a particle of sequence just created we need to just get the one let's see what is in there uh, this is some kb so convert into mb first This has been uh, set to 863 MB. So why 863 MB? Because uh, it was previously uh, was 659. So it was this 659. And it has been uh, increased by 50%. So it was uh, 409 and its 50% is 409 divided by 2. So this is uh, this has been uh, increased by 409 divided by 2, which is actually 204. So 204, and this is this is the increment. 204 MB has been increased, and it was previously to 659. So this is the current 863 MB, which is been set here. So everything is correctly uh, set. It. Uh, let's see which it is in progressing state. So let's wait for some time. It is uh, being restarted. Let's see the ports here. Okay, all the ports is running and this is successful. So if I uh, now exit into, let's see, we are going to zero. And if I run copy the mongo command again we are inside the primary and if i uh, run the get cmd line ops command which was uh, previously we have i have shown the common name is get cmd line ops one and here you can see that the in memory size has been increased it was previously 0 0.4 and now it has been set to 0 0.599 so if i just do the calculation again it, it is in gb so if i convert to mb and to just multiply it. and here you can see that this is 613 and 613 plus uh, 250 MB for port request. So 863 MB is correct. So everything so far so good. Everything is worked. So here you can see uh, there is nothing from today. And before ending, I'm going to show you, uh, tell you some feature work on MongoDB. We have intention to uh, implement the horse horizontal scale using the kubedb autoscaler which is currently supporting only the particle scale i have already shown you that these are the particle all these particle of sequence and uh, we are going to implement uh, the hidden member support for in memory mongodb is soon and uh, as the mongodb version 6.0 is uh, has been out so we are going to support that version so thank you all. If you have any question, please uh, unmute yourself and ask.